I was quite keen as part of this session, you know, we've been talking a lot about data, statistics, wires and all that stuff. And I was quite keen that we had to have a couple of presentations about kind of frontline, how is this stuff being used? How is it being used to benefit the public? And so really keen to have Vicky along from Highland Council um, to talk about that and later Tracy from the point of view of health services. So Vicky, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Vicky Nairn. I'm head of e-government at the Highland Council. Um, my role and remit covers uh, customer service provision across the Highlands uh, and some islands and also ICT provision and when I'm not doing that I also run large projects um, with our partners and also with the Scottish Government. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is how some of this stuff that we're talking about actually works in practice from a public sector perspective and public sector service delivery. So I think you've probably heard some of this, but it's just worth recapping for those of you who aren't up here. It's a huge area. Um, I'm not going to read out these facts, but it is absolutely enormous. We have quite a, a small population in comparison. So in most places we are rural or extra rural. I don't know if there's a separate classification for that. We do have population growth, and those figures will have been recently updated by the last census. We've got a lot of coastline, we've got a lot of hills, we've got a lot of locks, and they make for quite challenging delivery in terms of broadband. Um, we are remote and rural. Major challenges for service delivery for both the council and its strategic partners. You'll hear from Tracy later, and I'm sure she'll be saying the same thing about NHS Highland as well. Um, however, we have to deliver public services, and we have to deliver them as well as we possibly can. Um, our customers, who are our citizens, actually don't really care um, that we might have these challenges. As far as they're concerned, they pay their council tax and they expect a service from us. So it's our problem to try and figure out how we're going to deliver those services. And with that, effective technology is absolutely essential. So more and more we're moving services online, and I'll come on to talk about that. Um, more and more our customers want to contact us via electronic means. Um, we're moving away slowly from face-to-face -face contact, which is still important, um, and more towards internet, telephony, electronic transactions to suit people how they live their lives today. Um, location, you could see it as a barrier. We try to see it as an opportunity and understand how we can actually improve it. And I think that's really important because a lot of the reports you will read very much focuses on the negative. And one of my... Um, Real hobby horses is how can we actually turn this into an opportunity and do some real groundbreaking stuff, and that's what we've been actually doing. I think just to set a little bit of context for local authorities, public sector, lots of national reviews and programmes happened in the past few years. We've got the Christie Commission, we've got the Local Government ICT Strategy, we've got the Scottish Wide Area Network, which is going to be putting in a new public sector network across the whole of Scotland. That's in procurement at the minute. We've got national initiatives like Customer First, and they're all geared to getting the public sector to join together, to work together, and have common platforms so that we can actually provide public services quicker and more effective. Financial climate, pretty difficult right now. In terms of local, we're doing more with less. There are still tough times ahead. We're constantly reviewing and trimming our budgets. The national position is very much the same, realignment of priorities with spending reviews. But at the same time as all that, there's a growing demand for consumers for digital development, very much looking at e-services. They want to change how they do business, both as individual consumers, but also with the council as well. Um, gone are the days when they want to visit an office between the hours of nine to five. I work full time. I don't have time to visit an office nine to five. I want to be able to, to email somebody. I want to be able to ring them up when I get home, when it's convenient to me. Um, I don't want to have to take time out of my day. Um, things like the way we're changing, so um, talk a little bit about post offices. Um, the council took a decision to remove cash payments, which was one of our key reasons for face-to-face -face activities. And what we put in place instead was um, a mechanism where customers could go to their local shop and pay by pay point, or they could go to their post office and pay in cash. We've still got a lot of traditional customers, I would say, who like to use cash. That was quite controversial at the time, but one of the effects it's had for us is very positive, is about supporting rural post offices, because customers are now visiting their rural post offices to do one thing, and what we have in the Highlands is we have a network of independent post offices. We have one Crown post office in Inverness, but the rest of them are independent, and it might be a post office with a petrol station or a gift shop or a cafe, multiple purposes. So 
one of the positives for us is about supporting that rural post office agenda. I think in terms of our population, we have a more ICT literate population. Most of them have mobile phones. That's their primary method of communication. I know it is for me. You know, very rarely do I actually go and log on to my PC. Most of it I'm doing through my iPhone. Uh, and I get quite grumpy when I have to actually go and find a proper computer. And, and I'm not the only one. And I think it really um, came home to me, the figures that we've just heard, that 95% of businesses want to communicate with their customers in this way. Um, we also are communicating with customers by text. Again, they need to have the signal to be able to respond to that. Um, and of, of the survey we've just heard, 74% said mobile broadband was very important. Absolutely critical if you want to be able to transact online. I think I'll just briefly talk about this. Um, public sector citizens are very much our customers. Um, I run a customer services organisation, and it's really key to us to understand what our customers need and want want within the public sector we're all speaking to the same customers so NHS Highland ourselves registration service they're all the same people so for us the technology behind all these things we're talking about today about broadband 3g 4g it's absolutely critical to run our systems and to have shared services and joined up working and we're starting to see more of that now um, the infrastructure that you heard Lorne talk about this morning in terms of um, the high program will help that. That'll provide a backbone for the Highlands and Islands and the SWAN network, which is going to sit um, and complement it, um, that will provide the public sector service delivery. I think we're very much dependent on working in partnership with strong community focus. We're really here to serve our communities. That's what we're here for. That's our purpose. And part of that is about providing good public sector services. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of our successes. Um, in terms of infrastructure and ICT, we have the Pathfinder North um, program, which I am the senior responsible officer for. Um, for those of you who don't know about this, this is the largest, or it was the largest aggregated broadband uh, shared services procurement. Five councils, Highland Council, Argyll and Butte, Moray, Shetland and Orkney, all came together with the Scottish Government with um, a large chunk of uh, government intervention money, um, 63 million. And we procured a public sector broadband network. That's going to be replaced by the Scottish Wide Area Network, SWAN, in 2016. And that will complement the work that HIA are doing. And we work very closely with our partners. So I sit on the HIA project board for um, the infrastructure that Lorne was talking about. They sit on our project board. And I also sit on the Scottish Government SWAN programme board as well. Um, we also have a partnership with Fujitsu Services. That was an ICT contract that was put into place to deliver change and transformation, but also efficiency savings and community benefits. In terms of working with our partners, uh, it's something that we're very keen to do up here in the Highlands and Islands. So we work very closely with um, NHS Highland, put in a community telecare, telehealth hub. Uh, and I won't talk any more about that because I don't want to steal Tracy's thunder for later on. But certainly one of the things that my team have done in the last 12 months is put together a, a strategic agreement, shared services agreement with Northern Constabulary, as they were, which is out of hours customer contact for Highland Council. Again, underpinned by effective broadband systems, so we're all accessing the same system in the same time, real life service delivery. We've also got data sharing partnerships where we're sharing information about our customers with uh, local authorities, with police and NHS, and often those meetings are held by video conference. We're all in separate places. Uh, we're looking at Blue Badge administration. We've just put in a strategic arrangement with um, NHS Highland. Uh, and overall, we've now got a strategic partnership between NHS Highland and the Highland Council for Adult and Children's Services. And all of that is not possible without effective broadband and, about, and, and, and communication technology. And not just for the public sector, because as well as putting all this sort of what I would call back office infrastructure in, we have to be able to communicate with our customers as well. So they need it as well. We can't just look internally. Business services, um, video and telephone conferencing. We treat this as business unusual in the Highlands and Islands. It's something that we do all the time and we do it as much as possible. My problem is, is that when I have to go to a meeting in the central belt, um, it's not widespread. And when you ask for it to save yourself seven hours of travel, um, you often go, oh, well, OK, yes, um, we'll have a seat, see what we can do. And I'd say 70% of the time the answer is, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's not available. We're not set up for it. And that's a real challenge for me because there's some old figures there. They need updating. But you can save um, a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of cost. 
So it's something we need to get more switched on about. It's also very much dependent on the technology, but up here we're quite advanced. We've got a lot of good technology in place and it makes us work very effective. I think in terms of web portals and about electronic services to customers, we now have 60% of our planning applications are now online and that figure's growing all the time. We also do consult consultations on strategic issues such as our budget blogs and most people now choose to act with us electronically through their internet connections at home, but they have to have an internet connection. Um, and also remote working. We're moving more and more people out of our headquarters and actually enabling them to work from home or work from distinct offices. So if I ring up now for a council tax inquiry, I don't quite know where my call's going to be handled. It'll be somewhere in the Highlands and Islands with a trained member of staff, and it doesn't really matter where they are. And I know I very much take that approach as well, and probably more dispersed um, that, than the council. And very much it enables mobile and flexible working. We've now got housing repairs with dynamic scheduling, home working, remote working, which I've talked about. I think one thing just wanted to concentrate on is public sector partnership working, which is enabled by communications. Um, it's something I'm really proud of in the Highlands and Islands. We do a lot of good work. These are just some of the, the organisations I interact with, and I know my colleagues within the council and NHS will, will have a longer list. But we are now providing passport agency services for the Identity and Passport Service, whereby you can go into one of our face-to-face -face customer offices and conduct an interview with a passport office and have... Um, your details authenticated by our staff and your passport processed without having to drive to Edinburgh, Glasgow, wherever the nearest passport office is. And that's a real example of, of uh, how it can work. We also do a lot of registration. People come from all over the world to get married here, and a lot of the registration work that we do is all constructed electronically. Again, that wouldn't be possible without the backbone of the systems. Um, and, and there are others, but we're also trying to inter, interweave the, the technology possibilities and the strength of broadband connections into community hubs. But again, that only works if we have equality of provision. And, and it's just, I can't stress how important it is to have that. One of the things we suffer from in the Highlands and Islands is that there isn't enough commercial interest for companies to come. There's not the population centres, there's not the commercial interest, so you will get investment in the big centres like Inverness, but if you're outside of that area, it's very, very difficult and, uh, and communities quite rightly get very frustrated. I think in terms of our challenges, um, we have to work together, share our information. Um, very much a common approach. Not all partners benefit from that. Some of us do, some of us don't, but we have to take a shared service. I think investment in infrastructure is critical. We've already talked about that. But one of the things that we've benefited from is the Scottish Government intervention and funding, and that's absolutely critical for us going forward. Um, and the national agendas are very helpful in providing a clear direction, but what we've tried to do as an organisation is really try to drive forward as much as we can, link it to our political agenda, strengthening the Highlands, um, and make sure that it is a priority for the Council um, to, to put in effective broadband um, for both citizens and also for um, government. The current communications end is a powerful um, enabler for change and modernisation, but it has to be put within the wider context, and for us that's public service delivery and effective public service delivery. We have financial drivers, that's part of it, but it's also about how our customers choose to interact with us, how they want to contact the council, and how they want their services delivered. And that's not really any different to whether you are an individual or you're a business. You know, if you want to apply for a licence for a taxi, you still want to be able to do most of it online because that's how you live your life these days. You know, you shop on Amazon, you shop on supermarkets online. Gone are the days when you want to spend two or three hours of your day having to drive somewhere, go and see somebody, come away, paper forms. Don't want to do it anymore. Um, for us in a remote and rural area, very much communication is absolutely essential, um, public services, but also for communities and business provision. And just really, um, what I've said already, the Highland Council, together with its partners, is actively working to develop services um, for the future um, via some of these initiatives that we've got here. Okay, Vicky, thank you very much indeed for that presentation and some really good, powerful examples of how it's really benefiting people, the council taxpayers, as you say, that you are there to serve. I think you have to go very shortly, so I'm, if you... You have to take some a couple of a couple of minutes for, for questions. Actually, yeah. I have one for you, and that's the extent to which the challenge of connectivity pro pro provides difficulties for, say, social workers going into people's mm -hmm. houses, trying to communicate back to the office, because I know there's a move towards trying to input data on clients mm -hmm. on the move, 
And I would imagine that's quite easy in some parts of your territory, but not necessarily across the whole planet. I think it is. I think um, I think it is quite challenging at the moment. Um, it's probably quite a manual system. We've tried various different options. There have been various technological trials happening, and it's fine where there is a 3G signal that's strong enough to transmit data if they have a handheld device. But I think the problem that we've got is that those 3G signals are not consistent and they're quite patchy. So it's a bit like the example of uh, DAB radio. You know, you might get it in one place, but you, you, you might not get it two or three miles down the road. So I think one of the things we're looking at is, is what does technology allow us to do linked in with our network? Um, but certainly that's, that's one of the key areas for us is how do we enable mobile workers um, and, and whether or not we can do something that they can go and use devices within homes in, in the example you've talked about and then sort of store the data on whatever their device is and as soon as they hit a 3G signal, then it'll automatically upload to save them then having going back to the office, manually complete the paperwork, etc. Okay, questions from around the table. Thomas. I'm not going to ask a question because I have other opportunities to do that with Vicky, <laughs> but can I just add something to that, which I think we, we know, I like to think about a bit more, which is the, the plus for public services like ours that are meant to be democratic is it should increase, if we do it right, the democratic engagement with the people we're supposed to be working with, particularly in an area like the Highlands where people don't, you know, they're not going to come to the headquarters. You know, it's miles away. Why would they want to? But actually, they can engage with us very easily online, and I think we've yet to exploit that as well as we might through consultations and things like that, that actually that is a big boon, a really important, it, in, it improves our link um, with, with the people we're supposed to be working for. Okay, anything else for, for Vicky? No, if not, Vicky, can okay. I thank you very much thank for, you. for coming on this morning, giving your, your time and, uh, you know, a, a very uh, excellent presentation of the benefit, you know, to the community, and that's what it's all about. Sure. So thank you for that. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, just contact me directly.